to send greetings to our viewers at, no at home. We thank the Lord for his mercies that have gathered us here today. He promises in his word that where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be also. We are congregating with divinity today. It's our great controversy series. We are on chapter seven today. No, the separation from wrong with me here today is Brother Francois, Brother Matoncella, Brother Nuve, Sister Mioli, I'm Sister Nuve, shall we bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thanks for your providence of your weight. As we dwell on your weight, may you please send us your Holy Spirit. We pray for wisdom and understanding, counsel and power, knowledge and respect for the glory of the God of Israel. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 We worship a God who is mighty, a warrior in battle. Now, divinity accompanies a man called Martin Luther amen. for reformation. Yes. A man who was zealous, ardent, a devoted man, knowing no fear of men except of God. Like the herald of the first gospel, Luther springs from, prov from poverty. His early years were spent in the home of his peasant father. They didn't have much, yeah. but this man of God so much wanted the gospel that he could sacrifice everything and anything, and he did not look at his status yeah. as that of pity. Okay. It is a privilege, Sister Nube, that we see from the one saint. God has a, has means to propagate his message. And so right in Rome, uh, there's a gentleman called Luther. He is uh, a monk, obviously, and uh, viewers were invited to page 120 of this same book, The Great Controversy. It says in page 120, foremost among those who were called to lead the church from the darkness of the popery. That word is important to note. So God is a man to call among men, but there's somebody. You could be the person. And God is looking forward, not to many, but a few who stand. It says there, what was this man supposed to do? He was to now uh, work against this popery. What is popery? The doctrines, the practices, the customs of Rome, of the Pope. And what are these practices? We'll see them this morning. You see practice of indulgence, a lot of practices. And God says, you are the man. You must go and bring out the church and move forward without fear, as you say. That's very true. I mean, the man has been risen up in such a time as it was. Yes. You know, just to come and stand up so that Christ can be lifted up once again in the midst of superstitions and traditions of men. But what I love is that Daniel chapter 11 speaks about the Roman power to be the one that actually establishes the visions. Yes. So as, as we have done so many studies as individuals, we have discovered that Rome will continue until when Christ comes back. Okay. But let's go to Daniel chapter 11 verse 14. The Bible says, And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. So Rome, as you can see from the very inception of the Church of Christ, where Christ established the church, slightly few years after that, the first persecution began. It was the Roman power. Yeah. And as we have been going through, now this is lesson number, I mean, episode number seven, Rome is still in existence, whether it has been the papal Rome or the pagan Rome, but Rome is still there. The fingers of Rome to try and destroy and stand against the agenda of God is still there. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I love is that the Bible says, though they might actually rise up, they shall fall. Yeah. So the falling of the Roman power, the complete destruction of it, it will come in as much as Rome will try to exalt itself and want to occupy the throne of this world. But what I love, as my elder actually mentioned concerning Luther, who was actually being risen up as actually the herald of the gospel, the mm. first herald of the gospel. We saw the morning star of the gospel. You know? So we are dealing with the herald of the gospel. What do you see that his parents actually had an influence upon this man? Yes. You know, the early training of this man, actually that's the one gave him ground to be able to know exactly where to go, what to do and how he should actually handle himself as a young man. But on top of that, in as much as the parents were trying to guide the child, Parents were actually envisioning to seem to become a lawyer yes. at some point in his life, but the providence of God was able, able to override. Yeah. You know, so we as parents, as we study this lesson, we must be careful yeah. as we intend the good for our children, but we have to direct their steps while allowing God to be also to play his part. Why? Because the book of Psalms chapter 37 verse 22, the Bible speaks about how God does. He says, the steps of a good man yeah. were ordained by God 
and 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 he delighteth in his way. So God always ordained the steps of his people. Mm. Amen. So if we are to be in the company of the Lord, we need mm. to open a room yes, and space. a space mm -hmm. where God can operate. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yes. Now, uh, episode Amen. Well, Amen. And, uh, we are tackling the book of which a number of things are highlighted mm -hmm. about Luda, as the brother has said about him. But what I've discovered is the attack from the scriptures. Yeah. Why the scriptures was more asked. In fact, if I will read for you, it says here, through him God accomplished the great work for the reformation of the church mm. and the enlightenment of the world. Mm. It says here, no foundation for religious faith without the Holy Scripture. Yeah. So Luther will stand yes. for the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Because that's where we all have to stand yeah. about yeah. the Word of God. Yes. Why the Word of God? Because Luther has to go to many uh, uh, challenges because of the Word of God. The doctrine, like yeah. the elder had yeah. said, yeah. the doctrine was under the attack mm -hmm. of other doctrines yeah. from different uh, understandings of the Word of God. Yeah. But we'll, we'll share a number of uh, uh, challenges that he had from the university, yeah. from the world at large, mm. the philosophy, mm. uh, the rationalism, yeah. everything that came, mm. and it was a, a burden to him, but he had to stand because all of us as we're here, yeah. were to stand for the word of God Amen. And, and, and the truth that will set us free. Yes. Amen. 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 And <clears throat> uh, Luda, the reformer, yeah. he tested for knowledge. Mm. Okay. And he was earnest and practical. His character of his mind led mm. him to desire solid and useful rather than the showy and superficial. Mm. As he was coming from the humble beginnings, yeah. he, he, ma he managed to maintain that. Oh, oh yes. And uh, he didn't mingle with the opposite, mm. but he maintained okay. his, his character. I quote, even under harsh discipline of his former instructors, mm. he had any given promise of distinction mm. and with favorable influences, his mind rapidly developed. Okay. He had a retentive memory and lively imagination, oh, yeah. strong reasoning powers yeah. and untiring application, which means um, this character okay had been developed Amen. through the uh, commitment of parents yes. who are able to raise a child in a way of God-fearing. Okay. And it happens that uh, as this young man um, grows, he tests for knowledge. Oh, yes. and although his parents want him to be a lawyer, yeah. as it has been previously mentioned, yeah. God has a plan for each and every child. Oh, yes. So that we must know as parents mm. that there is no way the Alpha, the Omega mm. knows yeah. the beginning and the end okay. of each and every child. Thank you so much. Sister Muni and Brother Francois touched something, a subject that is very dear to okay. my heart, mm. the issue of the upbringing of Luda. Oh, yes. But before we go there, I want us to look at the parents of Luda themselves. Okay. Luda's father, is described as a man of a strong and active mind, mm -hmm. honest, resolute, yes. and straightforward. Yeah. Now, the first lessons of life, first life lessons mm -hmm. that Luther learned yeah. were from the honesty of his parents. Mm -hmm. Without them opening their mouth, mm -hmm. they looked at the way they led their lives. Oh, yes. To an extent that one time Luther says, mm -hmm. even when I thought they had done something wrong, yeah. their honesty and humbleness mm -hmm. was a constant rebuke to yeah. him to hold back a little bit before you can talk to his parents. Yeah. Now, this is a challenge oh, yes. to all parents here today. Yes. What life lessons mm. have you given to your children oh, yes. before they go to um, to school yeah. and go to church? You are supposed to be the first one. Yes. Mm. The first secrets of heaven must fa fall from your lips yes. to your children yes. and your actions must be lessons before you open your mouth. Oh, yes. That's where you see Job coming in in the land of Oz. Let's take your territory yeah. in the land of Pinoni, <laughs> oh. in the land where you are. So in the land of Oz, God had job. Mm. So you are the individual that God is looking for. And mm. so you see the critical nature of being a parent and being uh, God's child. Uh, in, in page 122, there's something of interest there. 
the fear of the Lord dwelt in the heart of Luther. Mm. I want to emphasize and underline the fear of the Lord dwelt. In other words, uh, the fear of the Lord had a place to stay in the heart of Luther. Mm. Our world is what it is now. Yeah. Without fear of the Lord, mm. people can do anything, yeah. especially right in the city of Johannesburg. Mm. Things happen because there's no fear of the Lord. Mm. Mm. As we have always said, you see, the government is struggling, gender-based violence. <laughs> there is no fear of the Lord. Of course. God is looking forward for this fear to be in you, in me, mm. then we become a society. Mm. And Luther represented God well and he was to stand there with the fear of the Lord. You can see his protocol. So it means even if there were challenges coming, this uh, uh, opposition, mm. he was able to stand because he knew he was not alone. Mm. You see, that, that, that's very, very key. I just want to touch also in, when it's come to the school of affliction. Yes, Luther. yes. You know, we are living in a world and where the Christianity is actually is the first uh, religion in the world. You know, we've got Buddhism, Hinduism and whatnot. But when it's come to Christianity, we are, we are told that Christianity was founded by Christ. So now when you approach ministers in the churches today, they will tell you whenever you go through affliction, it's a sign of you know, that you've been cursed. You know, so affliction becomes a sign of a curse, which is not true. You see, far from it. It, yeah, it far should from be far from it. You know, but I, I just want to read this quotation. It's how how Luther went through his Amen. you know school of affliction. Yes. He says that hardship, privation, yeah. and severe discipline were the were the school in which infinite wisdom prepared Luther for the important mission of his life. Mm. So he has to be put in that particular school so that he can learn some lessons, which yeah. is going to prepare him for the future hardship. Because at each and every given position in our in our walk with Christ, yes. God wants to develop in us a person that we have never known about. Amen. And and when you come to the book of Job, chapter twenty three, verse ten, the Bible says, "But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me or tried, I shall come forth as gold." Yeah. So the trying of our faith and the testing of our faith, the affliction that we go through. God is perfecting in us the character that we've never yet seen yes. before. Mm. So we don't have to look at hardship, lack of things in life as if it's a curse from God mm. or from whatever. Yes, there are instances where we can become lazy and sluggish mm -hmm. as individuals. We don't want to work. But if you have done your, your best as a child of God and things are not going your way, mm -hmm. don't blame yourself. Don't be too harsh on yourself because there's the invisible hand behind Amen. that is guiding every step of Amen. the way. You only want to appreciate whatever that will be going through after you've gone through it and when you're on the other side then you will see what God was doing mm. yes and when you read the book you'll have every verse in the Bible yeah it just gives you everything to know about God as the brothers have said you know about job yeah it will make you to be very very uh, you know looking forward to know the Word of God in mm -hmm. fact it will teach you to know more of the Word of God um, because here it says uh, when at the age of 18 he entered the University of Erfurt his parents having by thrift and industry acquired a competence mm -hmm. he applied himself to the start of the best authors yeah now, what teaches the, like the elder has said mm -hmm. is very very important when you read Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning and of knowledge. Yeah. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. But but Luther will make sure that he gets the information. He yeah. gets to know about yeah. this Christ, about this Bible. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? He, he, you know, he has to be diligent to read, yes. to know more about God. So he, the, as the quote says, he says, the, the most weighted thoughts and making the wisdom of the wise his own. Yes. He was moving to learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So Luther was very, uh, uh, I would say, industrious yeah. in knowing the word of God. Amen. He, he, he didn't just uh, fold his arms and say, yes. uh, things will just come the way you like it. No, <laughs> one is to read, one is to understand oh, yeah. the word of God. As I'm saying, the book, will expand your mind. Amen. The book Amen. will make you to know more of, of the things that are inside it. Looking at it, uh, the extent of, of Luther's poverty, mm. when he had had the earthly food, no. he would still uh, thirst yeah. for heaven. Amen. Actually, Amen. this man was so poor yeah. that at one time the reader records when he was from school going home, yeah. he would pass by a small town and sing mm. not to door not to street, sure. so he could get food. Yeah. When he had eaten, the earthly food, 
Martin Luther, what was yeah. thirst for heavenly food? Yeah. And he did not regard, uh, regard God anyness because he didn't have much. Please viewers, stay with us. We are going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Once again, the fear of the Lord Amen. dwelt in the heart of Martin Luther, yes. enabling him to maintain his steadfastness mm -hmm. of purpose and leading him to deep humility mm -hmm. before the Lord. Humbleness, beloved, and humble be beginnings are also associated with God in all aspects. Mm -hmm. If we were to check even the life of Christ himself, it was that of humility, as if he was not the creator amongst mm -hmm. creation. Uh, as Luther was in the university, yes, going to the library, he's alone. The parents are not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we parents wonder what our children get access of or yeah. uh, access it's to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we are not there? Mm. As he is getting this Latin Bible, he's so excited mm -hmm. and he feels and wishes that if he could have it all for his own. Yeah. And um, in that instance, as a child who has been brought up by God-fearing parents, Luther is surrounded by heavenly angels. Okay. That is on page 123. Okay. I quote, angels of heaven were by his side and rays of light from the throne of God revealed the treasures of truth to his understanding. He had never feared to offend okay. God, yeah. but now the deep conviction Amen. of his condition as a sinner took hold upon him as never before, close quote. Meaning that if a child is well taught about the word of God, because the word of God is a lamp to our feet yeah. and a mm -hmm. light to our path mm -hmm. and teach our children that they must always possess the word of God yeah. to be inside their hearts Amen. so that th they do not go astray, they do not sin. Mm. Okay, now I want us to look at a scenario where uh, Martin Luther is now in, in university. Yes. Yeah. He, is, he is now a professor of some sort. Yeah. He is rising in the ranks of life. Exactly. And then uh, uh, from the blue, Martin Luther gets an invitation mm. to come to Rome. Yeah. Something that everybody was looking forward to. Now, Martin Luther is to set up on feet. Yeah. And then on his way, he's supposed to rest in some monasteries. Okay. So that he's taken care of <laughs> until he reaches home. Yeah. Rome. Now, Martin Luther, when he gets to one of the monasteries, mm. he is shocked. He's shocked. At, at, at the wealth that was there. Yes. At, at the carelessness yeah. at which people took the weight of the Lord. Yeah. Now Martin Luther is thinking, people that are out there are, are, are giving sacrifices. Yeah. They are doing the best they can to stay in the presence of the Lord. Here are the people who are yeah. considered leaders. Yeah. They are so careless, yeah. very wealthy, mm -hmm. just so well mm -hmm. at the expense yeah. of the brothers and sisters yeah. who are out there thinking they are also playing as much as they were doing. Oh, yeah. Then this part uh, touched my heart. Uh, the Bible says, you will search me and find me if you search me with all your heart. heart. Look at the search that Luther does. He goes deep in the Bible before you know it is a professor, before you know it is in Rome. And when he gets there, remember he's coming from a poor background. Yes. Totally poor. And uh, one, two. Is getting to Rome and finding this monastery finds yo, what uh, wealth is here? Mm. But the people they in mm. who are the leaders of the church are living a lifestyle contrary to what he imagined and believed of as he studies the word. So this morning we are studying and we are saying uh, it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You can have a profile somewhere, profile there, but is your relationship with God? this profound mm. because Luther is actually surprised mm -hmm. that they would even joke <laughs> priest, joke on the pulpit mm. and the lifestyle sinful lifestyles he even says in one of the sentences uh, Rome then became the 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 city of hell mm. because of the lifestyle of leaders mm. and so in leadership we really require 
this walk with God. Mm. And Martin Luther became one of them. He didn't mind mm. who they were, mm. but he stood for the right. Mm. Stand for the right wherever you are. Mm. Mm. Yes, Luther was very, very disappointed. Yes. The yes. things that he saw, and as you have said, contrary to what they were talking about. Mm. And for that, it was so sad to him that he must continue yeah. and learn more mm. because his concern was to know the scriptures. Yes. To know everything that is in the scripture so that he will stand, you know, as we are here, we are to stand for the truth yeah. to what we know because there are a lot of things that he said. It says here, the fear of the Lord dwelt in the heart of Lord. Yeah. Dependence upon divine aid. Amen. And he didn't fail to begin each day with prayer. Yeah. While his heart was continually breathing a petition for guidance and support. Mm -hmm. Listen to this statement. Uh, it says, to pray well. Yes. Is the better half of study. Amen. There was no way to understand the things of God oh, without praying, yes, without reading the word true. of God as well. Mm. Amen. That's very true. Yeah, I, I also love the, uh, the the aspect where Luther, in as much as he's now being exposed to the Bible, yes, but he has not yet acquired more experience yes. on how to utilize every aspect of the Bible to overcome. Mm. You know, the, 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 the environment in which he was, was having an influence upon, upon him yes. so big time. It, that goes along with John the Baptist. You mm. remember John yes. the Baptist was the guy who says, Behold the Lamb of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was in jail and he sent people, he said, Go ahead and ask him, Is he the one? Man, should you wait for yeah. other yeah. So the environment in which we are growing in, yes. somewhere, somehow, always play around Absolutely. with our personal mm. experience with God. Mm. So Luther has known about the grace, yeah. how we can overcome now sin, but he is failing time and again. Yeah. Because of the what was happening in the Roman Catholic Church, they have taught them in order for you to overcome your sin, you need to afflict yourself. Mm -hmm. This was a legalistic mindset approach. Mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. So you will have to do something with your own power. And he was doing the best he could. Good. And as much as knowledge was there, until his friend came, you know, when he came to the end of Amen. his strength, Amen. and then his friend came and said, look, look, you are so exhausted. Yes. And you can go around the services and ceremonies. You're not going to be able to overcome sin. What I'm trying to say, I'm saying is, there is a method that God has established. Yeah. If mm -hmm. anyone who's interested to overcome sin must mm -hmm. be able to apply. Amen. Mm -hmm. In as much as we might have a, an ascent to knowledge or the truth, you know, in our head, if we don't apply the method that God has, has used, we are going to end up getting tired. No wonder why many people are yeah. keep giving up in Christianity. Mm -hmm. Not because Christianity is not working. It is the best religion ever. And mm -hmm. there will never going to be another one, you know, that can be compared. Mm -hmm. But Luther, because of me, he was misguided by the influence around him. He was now using a false method to be able to overcome his spiritual weaknesses for him to become what he wanted to be. But eventually, God, if he sees Amen. you are trying your best, Amen. Mm -hmm. God will Amen. always want to come Amen. and meet you halfway. Amen. So he sent a man who understood that area of life very well than he was. Then he came and said, oh, Luther, this is how you do. Cast yourself in the hands of the Savior yeah. and you will see what is going to happen. And you'll see again, repeatedly, he's going to do again the same thing until when God reach him and God be able to uh, whisper to him and tell him that they just shall live by faith. by faith. This was a turning up of Luther completely in his life, and he knew how now to apply knowledge correctly. The hey. book of Psalms brings something there. 146, verse 3 in Psalms. Mm. God is our refuge oh, yes. and strength. Mm. Yes. A very present help in the terrible trouble. therefore yes. we shall not fear mm. so I, I like the part where luther is exhausted is discouraged mm. stalpies comes into the picture oh yes i, I like the words of stalpie he says um when all had failed oh yes mm. stalpies opened the word of god to mm. luther mm. and he said look away from yourself oh yeah look away from yourself mm. the power is not in us mm. the power is in, in our connection with god mm. So for us to overcome that sin, it doesn't come from us. Mm. Connection from God. Mm. Look away from yourself and allow a look unto Jesus, who is your Redeemer. Oh, yeah. And that brought joy and light to Luther. Sometimes we want to try things on our own, but mm. what is critical is, are we connected? Mm. Okay. I want us to go back a little bit. I yes. find this a bit interesting. Thank eh? you. When Luther gets to Rome, he says, Profanity was so great yes. that it would be done sometimes during important services like yeah. mass. Yes. And I'll go back to what Brother Francis said. They were they were joking, yeah. even on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Now, this writer in one of your books writes, 
um, ministers of the word yeah. should not joke on the pulpit. Mm -hmm. It is a time when God wants to mingle with his children mm -hmm. and make them understand yeah. the secrets of heaven. Mm -hmm. He says sometimes some of these jokes that pastors make on the pulpit, mm -hmm. they make demons giggle and yeah. angels sigh. <laughs> now let's move further to what a, a brother, even brother Francis said again yes. on the issue of, of Martin Luther understanding that mm -hmm. Uh, everything is through faith, yes. not through our works. Mm. Now, you will realize that these Roman priests were actually selling grace. Oh, yes. You trust Christ. You. Mm. You, you pay so much for grace, mm. then you get it. Hey. You know, it, this pains my heart because it, it speaks more to the character of God than the yeah. characters of these people. Oh, yeah. Because these people were said to be to be a, a, a God's advocate mm. on earth, and this is how they present our God. Yes. A God whose grace you must buy. Yo. But Jesus comes down in his very person mm -hmm. and even chooses to, to, to clothe himself in humanity yeah. and dies on the cross. Yeah. So that salvation is free for all. Yes. But here are the people who claim mm. to be ministers of the word, mm. selling grace at a price. Yeah. Isn't that happen happening on our prophets today? Right away. Grace has been sold at a price. Mm -hmm. Poor people give everything that mm. they have. Yeah. In the search of forgiveness of sins yes. and buying grace. Yes, sir. that's very true. You see, when, when you come down to business, you know, I, I, I was actually astounded when I came to a, you know, a statement where it says, now Luther's eyes were opened. Yes. After he has been exposed, remember, he began by discovering the Bible. Yes. Reading the Bible. Amen. Now God bring him on practical aspect of what really, you know, the other institution was all about. Mm. So God brought brought Luther face to face with yeah. this corruption that I'm yeah. actually mentioning. Yeah. And and, and uh, I think uh, Great Controversy, page 125, paragraph one, it says, his eye, I mean, his eyes had been opened Amen. and were never again to be closed to the delusions of the papacy. When, when he turned uh, his face from Rome, yeah. he had turned away also in heart. And from that from that time, his separ uh, his separation grew wider until is until he severed all connection with the pa with the papal mm. church. So, when you are in a system, and that just as many people actually in systems, yeah, you're never gonna see the worst part of the system unless exactly. God takes you out a yeah. bit and be able to show you it. Exactly. Of course. Why am I bringing this point? Is because many people of God they are actually in the false systems mm. around the world. They are honest and sincere in yeah. whatsoever they, they know, yeah. but they are not yet exposed to the system itself and its agenda. Rome was a, actually a certain built system, mm -hmm. which eventually, when you're going to see in the future, God is going to make a call, yes. calling people to come out of come Babylon, out. because you cannot continue to be there. Luther was part of that system. Yes. When he saw it, the Bible says he was able to separate himself through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he never again went back. Yeah. So when we come out of certain system where God is calling us, we have to also examine ourselves have we cut all ties with the system? Or do we still having that sympathy with the system? So God is not happy to expose you to a certain evil and to leave you in that evil. Yes. No, God wants you, once if you have known that this is wrong, you will have to find a way on how you can disconnect from it. Yes, it was a, a task that God has given Luther yes. to unmask the pontiffs, okay. the papal leaders. Yeah. And I just have two things that he did to, one he says to enlighten and reform the people who will be visually to undermine the authority of Rome. Mm. Now there comes the controversy, there yes. comes a war now. Mm. Luda is under attack yeah. because he's attacking the Rome. Mm. Now he says to teach the people to think and act as responsible human beings, yeah. looking to Christ alone um, for salvation. Yes. Would what will, will overthrow the pontiff's throne. Mm. So this is what is all about. It's a war as we are here. We'll always have, a, it's a spiritual warfare. Yeah. We all face the attacks that will come. Yeah. So Lula had to defend all these things. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, my brothers. Now Luther enters into the wake mm. boldly. Yeah. His voice was heard from pulpit, mm. crying solemnly with a solemn warning, like yeah. John the Baptist of yeah. old. A voice yeah. crying in the wilderness. So was Luther's voice heard crying in the wilderness, Amen. calling everybody yeah. to come and hear the warning of the Lord and prepare for the soon coming kingdom. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back with you. Please stay with us. Welcome 
once again now luther like brother francis said turned his heart away from rome he was not intending to go back there okay. a lot of errors had been seen mm. now he seeks to straighten the record of heaven yeah. now you don't do that against powerful men of the world and you don't pull yeah it only right. takes protection from the heavenly Amen. angels to keep you alive now let's look at the consequences that follow mm. after you see the, the always being a benefit when you are when you begin to follow the counsel of the lord and if god has been leading you all the way it is much easier for you to be able to stand and out to preach boldly. Mm. So Luther has disconnected himself from the system. Yes. Now he has to make sure that the gospel that he preaches, mm. it has to be the gospel which God has to give it to him because okay. there's nothing that he can gain from the system. The system is not paying him at all. Yeah. And the system is not controlling his sermons. So here we are told that Luther was able to preach boldly the message of salvation addressing the issue of sin. And just, just a paragraph there, it says, uh, Great Controversy, page 129, paragraph mm -hmm. 1, it says, Luther now entered boldly upon his work as a champion of the truth. Yes. His voice was heard from the pulpit in earnest, solemn warning. He set before the people the offensive character of sin and taught them that it is impossible for men mm -hmm. by his own works to lessen its guilt or evade, I mean, evade its punishment. And then down there it says, and he related his own painful experience. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. So he's not preaching now out of just a head knowledge. Yeah. Now his gospel has to become so successful that it's going to, it's going to win the, ma the majority of the people on his side yes. because he himself has experienced that gospel. A preacher cannot, be, can become, cannot become successful in their field of, of work if they, they themselves don't live or they've not had experience. So Luther has, to, Luther has to first and foremost experience the salvation. Then when he went outside, out of Rome, disconnected from Rome, he was able to preach the same one. And the result will be that people are going to see the, the, you know, the marked distinction between uh, Rome's messages, which was based upon money, and, and Christ's message is through Luther, which has to do with lifting up Christ and be able to win people. Yeah. Now, if you look at that, the work of Luther was guided by the power of the Holy Angels mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Now, there's no way that the Holy Spirit can be leading you, my sister, my brothers, yes. as a messenger without addressing the issue of sin. Because when you go to the book of John chapter 16, the Bible says, when he shall come, yeah. he shall convict you of sin. That's the first thing. Yeah. And of righteousness and of judgment. So any true messenger of God does not preach about prosperity and money making of things. They of preach course. about sin and prepare the people for the judgment that is here to come. So in the life of Luther, we can see it was exemplified. And this actually gave him success. In as much as the power that it was, it was actually contending with was actually an empire. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what Rome was, the, the papacy or the papal Rome was all about. Mm. I mean, these were individuals who could extinguish your life in one blow. But we are told that Luther stood in the midst of the entire empire, yeah. one man. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he was in God. When we are in God, it doesn't matter how many we are. Mm -hmm. We can still speak the truth and be able to share the truth and God will give us success. Mm. The challenge we see there, why is Luther being attacked? The main point I saw is this uh, practice of indulgences. There was a belief here that if you have sinned, your punishment can be made less if you pay, grace for sale. even for those, grace for sale, <laughs> even those of yours who are dead, mm -hmm. they could pay for them. Mm. There's a fundraising scheme there. Mm. And when uh, Luther brought that out, or obviously, uh, you touch about finances, mm. wherever mm. there will be attack. Mm. Uh, I, I thank God for this man because in page 140, something touched my heart. You know, in this country, we're suffering from. Uh, uh, people who become whistleblowers. If you whistleblow anything wrong, mm -hmm. you are sure you're going to be killed or something. And for Luther, the same. It says in page 140, one man came with a pistol. Mm. Mm. The intention was to extinguish Luther. Mm. Mm. When he asked, why are you not afraid of being alone? Luther says, listen, bruh, I have God with me. Mm. I have angels around me. What can men do to me? Mm. The truth is nobody can touch us. We are untouchables unless God allows it. So it was this story that made him stand and say, it doesn't matter what is coming. If I die, I die. Mm. So in this case, you find him leading forward. And uh, we thank God for the privilege. View viewers are um, asked to view this, go read this book. It will give you an encouragement. Okay. It says here, 
He must continue faithfully yes. to maintain the truth, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the storms that were beating upon him. Okay. His language was, I am like Jeremiah. Yes. Now, <laughs> Luther, he learned a lot of, through the Bible. Yeah. And he saw his life mm -hmm. in certain characters that we get like in Jeremiah. the Bible. Yes. So Luther was not afraid, you know. Okay. He, he started to be bold. Okay. He says, a, a, a man of strife, and contention mm. but the more their threads increase yeah the more my joy is multiplied uh, now luther is trying is, is getting more and more bolder to this yeah he says they have already destroyed my honor and my reputation my reputation yeah one single thing remains it is my rushed body Amen. let them take it oh they will thus shorten my life by a few hours yes but as for my soul they cannot take that. He who desires to proclaim the word of Christ in the world mm -hmm. must expect death at every moment. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So Luther will face a lot. Mm -hmm. And he, he was growing in Christ. Mm -hmm. He was growing through grace. We had the courage to stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Luther is gaining uh, more power, mm -hmm. he gains more favor Amen. From, of the people. Oh, yes. And uh, that borders the authorities. Yes. At some point, we see him uh, asking himself, "How can I stand against such great men?" Yeah. Even these days, when some error occurs in the Church of God or in God's presence, mm. some people are even scared to rectify their wrongs because yeah. of thinking who are they yes and uh, luther in this instance uh, is showing us that irrespective of you are one or how many reminding me of elijah when he's yes. saying there's more on our side, our side than on their side okay on page 130 okay i read luther urged that the legate of the Pope mm. show him errors yeah. from the scriptures yeah. and pledged himself in the most solemn manner to renounce his doctrines. Mm. If they could be shown to contradict the word of God. Yeah. Close quote. Meaning in this instance, we need to be wide awake. Yes. Mm. We do not need to slumber for mm. we serve a God who sleeps no slumbers. Mm. And uh, we must be cautious and be alert of anything which contradicts the word of yeah. God. Because even when you commune with someone, you must be in a way that you are able to depict mm. or in sense uh, that this is against yeah. the law of God mm. or against the word of God. Mm. Luther continues on his mission. Yeah. He has gathered a lot of people on his side. Now, the Roman popes and the priests yeah. are now thinking a lot of crowds are going to Luther's oh, side. Yes. Now let's summon him to Rome. Okay. Uh, Martin Luther must arrive here. We yeah. must deal with it. And when he arrives, we want to make sure he does not escape. Yeah. Not only imprisonment, yeah. this man must be put to death. Yeah. Oh, yes. Now his friends are saying to him, please don't go. Yeah. We know a lot of blood is being yeah. in yes. Rome. Yeah. And a lot of my tires yeah. are attached to Rome. You don't want to go there, you will not come out alive. Yeah. I repeat the words that Brother Madonzela said. Yeah. Martin Luther says, I am like Jeremiah, yeah. a man of strife. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, when their threats increase, yeah. They bring me more joy. Yes. The pressure, I shall go. And then he goes when he arrives at the city. The other followers are told. Yeah. Martin Luther has arrived. I want us to look at this like some rally, some yes. political rally. <laughs> Martin Luther has arrived. Yeah. And people want, whisper one to another. He's here. Before they know it, there is a huge crowd yeah. that even wants to hear him speak. Yes. People are already willing to rally behind him. Okay. Brethren, when the Lord is with you, yes. Boys, not he draws a line Amen. for the powers of darkness, mm. a line which they will not cross. Mm. Like it happened with Elijah in Carmel. Yeah. He says to the devil, you can do whatever you wish to do, yeah. but I shall draw a line for you mm. which you will not cross. Then day after the night, the Lord manifests his power. We see it happening in the life of Martin Luther because these guys had vowed, oh, yeah. should he step into Rome, we'll make sure he's like Jeremiah. Yes. But heaven refused. Mm. 
and he carried on with his greetings. I saw something out of this uh, persecution of Luther because he withdrew from Rome. Uh, in page 139 to tell you, he was a preacher, he would write, he would argue where there was need of argue at the universities, mm. so he was known. And where did the word go? It spread to Switzerland, to Holland, to France, to Spain, England. Can you see what it does? When you stand up for God, mm. God stands up because there's a mission. Oh, yes. So our focus must be, where are we to? What is our focus? Mm. What is the agenda? Mm. What is the trajectory? So as long as you are in the trajectory of heaven, mm. angels will stand up thousand times, ten thousand of angels. Mm. There's no need to fear because God has promised he will be with us until eternity. To the end. That's very true, my elder. I mean, when you look at the Bible and what we're actually discussing today, you know, when, when we look at a historical background uh, yes. you know, of what happened back then, we put it very far. Yeah. I want us to bring it as, as close as possible to ourselves. Okay. The Luthers will have to live in the last days yes. because history will repeat itself. itself. So if it happened to Luther, the courage, the boldness, the connection that I had, that's, that's the courage and boldness that we need to have as a people decide. Now, we always want to take it so easily whenever there's opposition, but yeah. I want to read here just to just to catch up the nuance. It says, uh, uh, great controversy, it says, opposition is the lot of all whom God employs to present truths, yeah. mm. especially applicable to their time. So the truth that he was getting there was present truth. Yes. And at the end of the world, we have also what we call present the truth. truth. Yes. The, Work of Martin Luther was to expose and mask the corruption of the papacy. Yes. And all the, the corruption that was going on. At the end of the world, we know that the papacy is going to reoccupy again mm -hmm. the position mm -hmm. and it's going to oppress people. And it says that, and there was a present truth in the days of Luther, a truth at that time of special importance. There is a present truth for the church today. Mm -hmm. So we have to feed ourselves when we examine ourselves. Are we getting anywhere closer to the boldness of Martin Luther? Yeah. Mm. Because he knew his story and he knew what to say and what to do. Why? Because he spent more time in studying the Bible, praying and living the word. And that's what gave him the ground enough to be able to stand before the kings and monarchs and be able to advocate for the truth. Okay. In, when we are concluding this, I want to to look at this scenario. Yeah. He is taken to trial mm. and they make sure he does not speak. Yeah. And then the mistake they make is that they say to him, right, okay. with his oh, yeah. <laughs> And Martin Luther, right. right. Now the power of the written word, right. Right. it's Amen. not everybody had a chance of reading yes. what Martin Luther wrote yeah. and that exposed them. Yeah. And now they say to their heads, they caucused to say, we want to catch him so yeah. that he doesn't go. We have to kill him, he remains here yeah. so that we are triumphant just like the Lord yeah. made provision Amen. for his children to escape during the destruction of Jerusalem. Mm. Like he made provision for Paul Wait. to escape by a basket at night. Yeah. Like he made provision for Christ yeah. when he was being stored to escape. He makes provision okay. for Martin Luther okay. to escape. Oh, uh, our closing remarks, please. God is in the business of making calls for yes. people to separate from the corruption of yes. course, or, or certain institutions that are being built. Mm -hmm. And I would like to appeal to the viewers, if really you find yourself in one of these institutions where the gospel of Christ is not being preached and God comes to you where you are, please accept the call and separate yourself through the power of the Holy Spirit. Enjoy it with the people of God. Be a reformer like Martin Luther. And he says in his clothing, in his clothing wait. We cannot attain to the understanding of the scripture by our own intellect. Mm. We need to be soaked in the word of God and his spirit. Mm. Amen. Opposition is the lot of all whom God employs okay. mm. to present truth, especially applicable mm. to their time. Yeah. Mm. There was a present truth mm. in the days of Luther. Yeah. Mm. A truth that at a time of special importance, Amen. there is present truth mm. for the church today. Oh, absolutely. The word of God must be not be neglected. Okay. The word of God is power and it gives us the sure weed of prophecy. Mm. We have reached the end of time. This earth's history is concluding. Mm. God requires reformers Amen. like Martin Luther, Amen. like John Wycliffe, who will stand like guards on the walls of Jerusalem blowing the trumpet 
signaling the inhabitants in the city that danger is coming. Today, God is looking for men who shall stand with those trumpets on the walls of this earth Amen. and blow them oh, yeah. that truly the Lord is coming. There is danger. Let every man repent mm. and turn to the Lord. After all, Solomon, he was, who was in so much when yeah. says all is vanity. Oh, yeah. Let us worship God and give him glory. And he promises in Revelation, he says, behold, I come quickly yeah. and my reward is with me Amen. to give to yes. each one as, as they have done well Amen. in the race. May the Lord richly bless you until we meet again. May he keep you in his keeping care. Shall we close our eyes and pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Through your word, we triumph. In your word, we conquer. Amen. Thank you for this series, the great controversy that the book reveals, the life of your people you have chosen. And we believe in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will bless us, will teach us, and will empower us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.